Hello, so I'm Chris Hanif. I'm a professor of physics in the Department of Physics and I'm the Director of Studies of Physics at Downing um, and uh, I'm also the Deputy Head of the Department of Physics, although I'm not working at Downing. Well, when, when students come in the first year, then the way the natural science course works is that they follow a course of study involving three experimental sciences, so they choose from um, physics, chemistry, uh, material science, uh, biology of cells, uh, for example. So a range of different experimental subjects, and they take a fourth course, which is mathematics. So the students don't have to specialise in the first year. But then in the second and third years, they would eventually um, hone into the subject that they prefer. So typically, in the second year, a student will take um, three subjects, but usually uh, two of those modules might be in the same subject, might take two modules in uh, chemistry, or two modules in physics, or two modules in earth sciences, um, and a third subject. And in the third year, then they would focus, they would major in, in one the topic, the one that they enjoy most. Well, typically, natural science candidates have um, a pair of interviews, and they're typically subject-based. So I interview with the other fellow in physics, Professor John Richer, and in the interview, basically, we will be asking you questions that are principally subject-based, um, taking you through from areas that you understand through to areas that you might not. Um, and in the time we have available, which is about 20 to 25 minutes, we probably will get through two or three of those questions with you. Uh, so it's very, very much subject-based quizzing and discussions Well, the, um, the, the questions, broadly speaking, as I said, they're subject-based and uh, will typically start uh, with an area of physics that you've understood and that you've studied. Um, but then we would lead you on, perhaps, to a slightly more challenging problem about that bit of physics, uh, basically trying to see how you can use the information that you have to explore a different situation. And, and the span of the questions that John and I would ask would range through, broadly speaking, the physics that you've covered at uh, school, but we also sometimes ask uh, maths questions. And in both cases, we might expect you to do some problem solving on a piece of paper, uh, sketching a solution or a graph, or maybe uh, articulating your answers by use of maths and pen and paper. Well, that's, that's something that typically happens quite a lot. And so John and I, when we interview, we do leave a, uh, a sort of instruction sheet to students that they can read before they come to the interview explaining that not being able to answer a question is something that happens quite commonly um, but it's something that they shouldn't worry about the um, the types of questions that we ask are deliberately designed so that um, getting the right answer is not what we're looking for but rather we're looking to see how you can manage with the information that you have how you explore new situations. And so if you get stuck, that's not an unusual part of the, of the interview process. And what we would do then is we would essentially tell you that in fact that's okay, let's move on to a different question. Um, and you shouldn't interpret that to mean that you've done uh, badly or anything like that. It's a natural part of the interview process. That's a, um, a complex and interesting question. I think the, the thing that uh, I would be looking for is really to try and understand, engage the potential of a student for coming to study and doing natural sciences at Cambridge. Um, and so that, that includes both um, their ability to engage with the course, their level of interest, their ability to engage in the course from a technical point of view. Do they have the skills, be they physics or mathematical, to, uh, to do well uh, with the study here? Um, and also because the study in Cambridge is very much more independent than the study they might be used, at, used to at school, then we'll be looking to see whether or not they have that ability to engage independently uh, when they come and study here. So really it's potential for fitting in with the course and managing the course and doing well with the course. So I really don't think that um, I should answer and explain that if you do X, Y and Z in the day before the interview, you'll be well prepared. Um, I think what I would want students to prepare for would be to um, prepare for the nature of the interview. And so to familiarise themselves with the fact that we will be asking subject-based questions. So they might want to review the material they've learnt. 
um, understand that we'll be looking for levels of engagement and interest, so they might want to reflect on how they might demonstrate that at interview. Um, but also uh, understand that uh, the, the interview is a two-way process, and so being prepared to engage with us, being prepared to actually do some problems with us and maybe get them wrong, maybe get them right, uh, not be perturbed by that, but to be themselves uh, and show themselves as best they can. I think that's what I would want students to be thinking about in preparation for an interview with us.